Is it is it hard is it hard to be fresh if you don't have money or can you still pull it off? See, when I had no money, I still had sauce. Mm -hmm. See, if you don't got no sauce, then you, you, you're lost. Mm -hmm. But you also get lost in the sauce. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another video. Today we are fully assembling a D16 head. A customer of ours came in and uh, they had some issues with the timing and ended up bending uh, two of the valves. So instead of just putting some stock valves in it, he went ahead and picked up a case of Ferreras. We got Ferrera exhaust and intake valves, and they were flat too. That should help with some compression. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just slap everything in. He also got some springs. Got some springs here. We're gonna use the stock retainers. I've seen very good success with these stock uh, retainers, up to like 400 horsepower on a Z6 once. I had the stock retainers. Actually, my build that y'all know me for, um, I have the stock uh, retainers on them as well. Uh, some people I've noticed that have had issues with the other retainers, not so much in the past like five to six years have I seen anybody, but um, they were having issues with those retainers, valves popping out. May have been the people that were putting them together too. So um, that may have been playing probably the biggest factor in the whole thing. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and fully assemble it. As you can tell, I already started taking them out. You guys know how to take out valves if you've watched any of my videos. You go ahead and put here, get a hammer or a mallet, hit on it, it's gonna pop those keys right out. Um, you guys have seen me do that multiple times. And then I got my special tool I made. Look at that. I think it's on the cart. I'm gonna grab it. I got a special tool that you guys have seen before um, that I use to press these valves out because they don't make anything uh, to press these out. You can use a C-clamp, but I just don't like touching the bottom of the head at all. Uh, or touching the valve, especially if you're going to reuse the valve, it could mess it up. Um, I got to find my tool somewhere, probably on the cart. Hate that we've moved, everything is like everywhere, but it's slowly all starting to come together. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these uh, valve springs out. We're going to pop these valves out and then we're going to start lashing them. Um, and that process I'll show you. I got some valve lash here, you hook it up to the end of the drill. All right, now I got to listen to the compressor. Anyways, so you put on the end of the gun and it seats the valve. So I'm going to show you guys that process. But first, I'm going to go ahead and remove all these valves. All the valves are out. As you can see, we have them over there. When you are taking them out, if you're reusing these valves, you want to make sure that they're in the same order. So you want to keep the same one going in the same spot. And then when you just lash it, just to make sure that it, it seats properly. Um, you don't want to mess them all up and switch them all over. You could do that and then relash it. but it's better to just stick with the same exact one, especially with all motor. You want as much compression as you can, trying to squeeze every little ounce of horsepower out. Time to go ahead and seat these valves. I had to close the shop door because it is starting to rain like a mofo outside. Um, so I want to show you guys before I got started because it's kind of hard to hold the camera and do the valve lash and I kind of want to explain it first. So you want to get yourself a little piece of tubing. Um, you're going to stick this on top of the valve. Clean it off. I'm going to clean this real good because you don't want stuff getting in the engine. Um, but you put that right there, put that on top of the valve, and then put it on the end of a drill, and then it's going to make it spin. So then from there, you're going to take your uh, grinding compound. You can get this from like Advance, you can get it anywhere. Um, you're going to put it on the bottom side here. You're going to put it down here, and then once you put the valve in, you're going to pull on it. You're going to hear a difference in sound. Um, I know that sounds, I know that sounds weird, but you're going to hear the sound change once you sit there and you start trying to lap the valve. It'll be kind of like a grinding sound at first, and then eventually it'll go away. Once it goes away, that means you're sat properly. Um, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and do the intake side first, and then after that, I'll do the exhaust side. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Go ahead and finish the first one here. As you can see, you have the valve in. You wanna put your, your uh, vacuum hose on the top of the valve, just so it's in there good enough, and then you're gonna spin it. You'll hear that noise, that grinding noise, and then you'll hear it disappear. So this one is nice and good. Sorry about the lighting. Um, this one's nice and good. Now you're gonna wanna go ahead and clean all that compound out. Um, Cause you don't, wanna, you don't want that stuff getting into the engine or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and get all that out and then we'll go to the next one. Get them all done. Shway, this side is seated. I just need to go ahead and put the valve springs in finish this side as you guys know I always work in order so I'm gonna do this side um, put the valve springs on then I'm gonna go to the next side seat the valves then put the valve springs on so it's all done you do not have to do it in that order you can do it however you'd like 
just for my brain, that works easier. Um, I wanted to let you guys know, if anybody is local or in Florida, and you are in need of a B-Series engine, I have a good GSR head, and I just went to the junkyard, and I found a totaled uh, CRV, and it was actually a B20V, so you can see it's got the big dome on it. It is the Z, I don't know if you can see it here. You can't see that on camera, but it's a Z, yeah, you kind of see it. This is a Z block, the B20Z2, I think it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw that head on here. I just got it back from the machine shop. I got it resurfaced and everything and cleaned up. So I just need to go ahead and put the valves in that one, the valve springs, and then slap her on and it's done. And I actually have type R uh, springs and retainers that we're gonna be putting on this head. So if you are in need of a motor and uh, you got cash, well, let me know. If not, I will be trading for like D-series race car parts. I really wanna finish my race car. I wanna get that out to the track. So finishing this motor is gonna go ahead and fund that. So if you're in need of a uh, B-series, let me know. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get to uh, putting the valve springs in and then we'll go ahead and get to the next side. Before we get started on the other side, I'll just give you guys a little update of what's going on. Say what's up guys. Yo, yo, yo. Uh, the Geo is just doing a quick oil change on a Prius. Little Prius. Oh, we got a little bit of everything. Right? At, literally, every time I've been recording now, you have not been working on a Honda. No. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, so <laughs> this uh, Corvette over here, you guys found that the uh, valves were loose, so, right? Yeah, Something like valves, that? I think they, they didn't adjust them in the right way, so we gotta readjust them and uh, right. get the part in order the right way to get all it right. going. Then after we do that, we'll go ahead and do a leak test on it, make sure it's all nice and sealed up for the customer. But this is a cool old Grand Sport. I think this was in the last video, I cannot remember. But this Grand Sport is super dope, I love it. I can't wait till this thing is finished, and I hope the customer lets me rip it. Um, as you guys know, we got that K24 delivered next time, or uh, in last video. We're gonna go ahead and throw that in tomorrow. Um, but anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and get on back to it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. We got this side all finished and complete. Now we just need to go ahead and flip it around. Do the exhaust side. All right, well that is all she wrote. She is all back together. Then tomorrow I'm gonna come in and knock out that B20V and it'll be a wrap. Then, once I'm done with that, then I have to finish assembling the engine for Skunk 2 uh, project. That is the white EK. So we'll go ahead and finish that and see what we do. But yeah, it's just raining. It was uh, definitely a busy day earlier. So there's a bunch that I did not record. I was just too busy with it. Once we get more organized and we get the shop, everything just in place, like it, how it was before, I'm gonna try to walk around with the camera like all day, but still a work in progress. Um, I pretty much got like 99% of my stuff out next door and I might record tomorrow to show you how it's all empty and whatnot. But I did get my dyno. Uh, my dyno is here now. And then I got the four post, still got the ramps. I'm gonna have to put them somewhere put them out of the way for now uh, but yeah the dyno is here all in one place I feel a lot better having all my stuff right here and then this is like my little bay here so cool enough but anyways guys thank you for hanging out with us today go ahead and like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time peace is it, is it hard is it hard to be fresh if you don't have money or can you still pull it off see, when I had no money I still had sauce mm -hmm. so if you don't got no sauce then you, you, you're lost mm -hmm. But you can also get lost in the sauce.